Hiya, so it's Gaz here from Moth Couture with the last video for this aviator themed bed and also the, the rest of the fitments that I've done, like the desk and what have you, you know. Uh, those of you that have been following these uh, videos, the aviator sort of playlist, if you like, uh, you'll know that this was a, a job that I was doing for my son. Uh, he was my youngest client ever. And it was because we've, we've lived in this house, this cottage for like a year now. And everywhere's a mess because I'm like sort of, I've made my workshop now and stuff. But some jobs are bigger, so they, they clearly demand more space than what I've got in my workshop. So I'll work outside. And then a lot of the time I end up working on the, the sort of eight foot table that I've made downstairs, the sort of dining table. Um, so what I wanted was living in this bloody constant workshop was to start getting some rooms done and focusing just on a room. So this time, we've just had a little girl recently, so I decided what we're going to do, we're going to move here in the back room, get this one all sorted out for her, move them in, happy, and then concentrate on the next one. So there we are. There's the sort of background behind it. The theme for the aviator, aviator chair, aviator theme, uh, it kind of came from these chairs, right? I've got a couple of these chairs. Uh, sort of around the canny, funky looking things, right? Um, he wanted a gaming room so he can sit inside, you know, bloody lose him to the babysitter of the Xbox. We're losing for flipping months. Uh, but he wanted a gaming chair to sit in his new room, and the desk and what have you. And kind of what he had in his head was, um, well, it was these very functional um, sort of gaming chairs. They're probably mint, right? I'm not a gamer, so I don't know. But I, I very much believe that there is place for form and function. It's, it shouldn't be one over the other. And um, I didn't want to go with these gaming chairs because I just thought they looked pretty fucking soulless. They looked shit. Um, so sorry to anyone out there that's like a pure games master sort of type geezer. Um, but yeah, I just thought, no, nah, there's no place for that in our house. Um, it's not happening. So I managed to get a couple of these chairs. And when I was looking at the construction of these chairs, I will in the future have a go at one of making, these, making one of these chairs without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, but for now, I thought, right, I want to tie in the rest of his room with this theme. There's nothing out there you can buy. There wasn't. I had a look. And then uh, I thought, right, I'm going to make him a bed. So as he'd been keeping track on the post, I made him a bed from scratch. Not bought a bed, then covered it. Not bought bits. Totally designed it, made it from scratch um, using carpentry uh, techniques. The only metal work I've used on the bed is to trim the headboard. And also the brackets that you get for the side, the sort of side rails, I don't know what they call them, like I've said in many other videos, I don't know the terminology, I just know what I'm doing. And because uh, I have an idea in my head. But at the end, you've got like, um, you can either put dowels into the, the headboards and uh, the footboard to keep these side pieces of the bed up, or you can buy these metal back brackets. I decided to go with the metal brackets because it's just clean and simple. Um, likewise, when I put the slats on the bed, I use screws to keep them in place. Um, but the construction of the bed is all wood. Right, so I'll just give you a quick tour. So we're up in his bedroom now. Um, you'll see, first and foremost, there's his bed, right? The aviator bed that I made. And I made it using, I'll show you the footboard there. I made it using reclaimed metal that I had. <laughs> Some of you might remember from the old uh, chimney sections that I had remaining from the uh, wood burner. So I pretty much chopped them up. Got the metal out, flattened it all out, give it a good clean, cut it to the sizes that I want, and then kind of pieced it together as I went, you know. Um, some of them have got real nice tarnish on them, not dirt, tarnish. So actually, they've got a really nice effect. This sort of pattern here that I've put in, right, excuse me fingers, we always use compasses and stuff like, or a sharp edge when we're in the military. I'm not in the military, I'm uh, use my fingers, this is Mothcrature, right, so would cut slats in like this, right? And the reason we do this is to give the appearance, otherwise it's just a, a big flat sheet, give it a bit more of a decorative um, sort of effect. And, and ultimately what we're trying to mimic is um, wings on a plane, not looking like a wing on a plane, but have the aesthetic of how the uh, the construction of the plane, so like sort of riveted pieces. Um, so the kind of dimples and the sort of unevenness in the, the metal just adds to its sort of beauty, to be honest with you. It's not like machine polished flat. It's uh, It's got like character. The leather, uh, reclaimed leather from an old um, settee. Uh, chopped it all down. It was Laura Ashley settee. It was really nice, actually. Uh, chopped it all down, got all the leather off, and then again, cut it down to size. Didn't use the sewing machines, right? What I did was 
the pieces that I could use, which was stitched together, like uh, machine stitched, I used them and incorporated that in my design. So round here, it's got wadding. The footboard's actually got a bit of cushioning. It's the same height as the mattress. So if you want to sit on the footboard when you're putting your shoes or anything on, it's nice and comfortable. It's not like hard wood. Um, and again, just to finish off with the metal work, I use these nickel sort of um, leather studs, upholstery studs, upholstery tacks, whatever you call them, and put them in place, clearly to hold the leather, um, stapled it and what have you, and then put them in as a sort of decorative finish. Some areas had to go for folds. So folding the leather um, to create like a, a sort of even effect, if you like, you know, so it was like, yeah, it looks like a fan, but I wanted it to look neat. Not just fucking cobbled together, you know. Um, so the bed next to the chair, I think you'll agree, it's uh, it, it looks like a matching pair, you know. Coming up, these are the bits I was on about. I'll just lift this up so you can actually see what I'm talking about with the metal work. There we go. So it's you buy these these sort of brackets, and they're just like sort of clip into your well, screw into your. Uh, footboard, your headboard, where you want them, and then you put the other piece on these like sort of length size side bits, and then it just bolts on, like clips into place, and then bolts together. And then there's the headboard, pretty thick and spectacular. Um, once I did this, once I finished it all, I went over it with me um, um, angle grinder with the um, it's like sort of it's not a sand at this, but you know what I mean, like something like that, just to take off any sort of rough edges. I use my ball hammer to hammer down on any corners before I put the, the corner rivets in. Keep all the corner pieces down. There we go, like that. And then went over any bits that were going to be sharp um, with my grinder, just to take off any burr. I'm over the moon with the effect of it. It looks lush. Um, clearly, it's moving around the room. It's got a little utility uh, bench there. Reclaimed wood. Uh, raw metal uh, legs with a, a little raw metal basket. Uh, just welded in place. And then on the top, uh, these are moth couture ones. And then on the top, my, um, these are actually getting quite uh, good reviews at the moment. Like I haven't had anyone buy one yet, but I've had four people interested in buying them. And these are like reclaimed um, crystal head bottles, which I diamond cut the bottom off. I then make its own little spine, which keeps the bottle floating above the Edison lamp. Because what you don't want is you don't want the bottle sitting on top of the Edison lamp because um, the bulbs get hot. It's only thin glass, certainly don't want any sort of pressure on there because it could crack and it could end up becoming a dangerous thing. So that sits above it. Um, it's sat on a piece of uh, oak block and it's branded Moth Couture as well. And, and on it, put like sort of vintage uh, cord. I went with maroon, just going back to my older days in the military. And it's also on a dimmer as well. Um, I find these Edison bulbs look much prettier when they are so far down and it's just a very gentle uh, light. Look at that, it looks so cool, man. Um, finishing around the room, we went with, um, what was it called? Farrow and Ball paint, just a really matte finished paint. We've got weird ceilings, so it's like in the annex of the house, you know, so it goes up like that. So this wardrobe that I got, huge massive line the Witch in the Wardrobe wardrobe, actually had to cut the uh, corners of it on a slant. It's like oak, it's beautiful, man. And um, yeah, I'd had it for like all of an hour and I was like, fuck, I'm not gonna fit in this room, I'm gonna have to cut it down. But actually I'm chuffed with how it looks. It uh, it really does sort of command presence in this room without actually taking over it and looking like mental, you know, like just jump back there like that. Yeah, it's a lovely size wardrobe anyway. But moving around and then the desk, the bit that I've just finished, I wanted to try and bring something else into the um, some other um, material into it. Didn't want to do it with leather. Uh, didn't want to do it with uh, metal. I thought about like the old-fashioned leather clad desks, you know, like the writing desks. But ultimately, he's like an 11-year-old boy. He's going to be in here for a few years. But I want to do something that would be a bit more appropriate for him, his age. Not something that if he was in the Victorian times, it would be great if he was like a professor or something. But So I went with just wood. Now, I knew I wasn't going to be able to match that, um, so I thought, well, I'm not going to try and match it uh, because then it would just clash. So I went for something that looks totally different. Still wood, soft wood, though. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to kind of match my scaffold board, their reclaimed scaffold board, 
I haven't used scaffold board, but I've tried to get the appearance of scaffold board. In the earlier videos, I showed you the construction of it and on the front there, front piece, um, where it's a little bit thicker. So it looks like a one piece desk. On the edges, clearly, you've seen where I've got me riveted bits of metal uh, just to finish it. And then it is underneath. I have a couple of buttons to secure it on the back of the wall. So really, this side here, the chain's just for aesthetics. Uh, but this side very much does serve a purpose. It is taut. It's got the anchors up on the wall there. And it'll just stop that bench moving down. So you can actually put weight on it. You'll see that it also matches the trim of the uh, sort of um, wardrobe. I wanted it to kind of the lines to flow. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and then in the back there, you've got his little telly hidden away, snugged away, so he can get on his bloody Xbox or whatever he does, geeking it up. And he can be in his bed, or he can be in his little comfy chair. And then the final piece of moth creature, um art, if you like, in his room, was his candle stave. A piece of uh, Jack Daniels number no. 7, genuine Jack Daniels number no. 7 uh, barrel. Um, it's one of the staves off there, which I've just totally um, sanded back, sympathetically sanded back. I haven't wanted to remove all the char. Now, the thing with these bourbon bottles, uh, bourbon barrels, they do burn the inside of them and it gives it that smoky uh, sort of aroma, smoky um, taste. So the insides are black, thick black. Um, now I did sand that back because I wanted it to be clean. So you'll see that I have sanded that back. However, on the top edge, where the natural sort of um, uh, darkness was, uh, you know, to the oak, with damp and age related sort of, uh, wear and tear. I've sanded that, but all these lovely black blemishes, that's part of the wood's character and I definitely didn't want to remove that. I didn't want it to look like a new piece of wood. So I sanded back nice and smooth, uh, put in me sort of little holes, drilled in me little holes there for me wax, little candles to go in. Uh, the reason that there's little holes on the underside is some of these cheaper candles have a tendency to overflow like you've just seen on that one. And it can actually stick the bloody candle in place so you need some way of getting it out without wedging something in there and potentially damaging the wood. So I put little holes all the way through so you can just poke a little screwdriver or something through to get it out from the underside. Clearly that's branded moth mature as well. Right, 10 minutes. Uh, well, 12 minutes there, gobbing off. But that was my first sort of interior design sort of project finished, I suppose. And I'm over the moon with it, how it's turned out. Um, yeah, until next time then. Take care. Bye-bye.